Guitar and Excel C major A minor scale fret number nine fingering. Get ready and some coffee. You know, Phil's been calling me a toxic white hetero man to our ESG investors again. That is our environmental, social, and governance investors. And honestly, me toxic? It's silly for crying out loud. Yeah, calling me toxic is as ridiculous as a modern day superhero, which is of course completely ridiculous. I mean, I hear Hollywood's plan is to make them not only ridiculous, but also ambiguous and ugly, which doesn't sound profitable to me, but maybe the ESG investors will like it. I don't know. I mean, look at what they did to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, April O'Neil. April O'Neil is not supposed to be shaped like a pear. I mean, honest, Terrorizing April O'Neil like that is going too far, Hollywood. You've gone too far. You can't go around just terrorizing women like that. It's, 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 it's not nice tampering with turtle testosterone like that. I'll tell you what. Anyways, the point is that I happen to be a very kind-hearted and charitable person, not toxic. I mean, just yesterday, some bum said he needed to take a crap. And I was like, hey, hey, you don't need to take a crap. Yeah, I'll give you one of mine. Because stealing people's crap don't sound safe or sanitary. Yeah, I usually just flush him down the toilet anyways. I'm guessing he needed some fertilizer to start like a garden or something. To grow his own food, be self-sufficient, help the community, you know? Anyways, whatever. Who cares about the ESG thing? Anybody investing in ESG is headed for a bloodbath. By, by, by bloodbath, I meant bad returns on investment, Phil. Oh my God, Phil's calling the FBI now. We need to get this guitar lesson on its way before they take me to jail, charging me half a billion for bail. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay. You could just follow along. But if you do have access, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. Quick recap of the project thus far, noting that you don't have to have watched all prior presentations to follow along with this presentation. However, a general overview of the overall project can help to orientate us. So let's go back to that first tab to get that overall view. We've been looking at the C major scale and related modes. We started out mapping out that scale in open position, which we define as frets 0 through 3, noting that that E represents the low or heavy string, the string closest to the ceiling, funnest way to map out the notes in open position being to construct the chords from the notes in the scale and map them out starting with the one chord, the C major chord, which we mapped out and discussed in detail. We then went to the four chord because it also has a major chord construction, mapped it out, discussed in detail, then the five chord, then to the two chord because it has a minor chord construction, same with the three chord, the six chord, and then the seven chord, the diminished chord construction, noting that if we mapped all of the notes in all of those chords in the open position, we would have all of the notes in the C major scale, which would look something like this in open position. We then wanted to jump to the middle of the guitar, and we're gonna start in basically positions or frets four and five, learning this area of the guitar first, not by constructing chords, but rather by looking at the scale shapes so that we can then connect the scale shapes to the open chords that we have learned in open position. And so we talked about this shape, we talked about it in relation to all the different notes in our uh, major scale. We then moved up to fret number seven, the next shape, which starts on fret number seven, seven through 10, and discussed how we can link it those shapes in fret number seven to the shapes in fret number five and the open position. And now we're gonna be moving to fret number nine, doing a similar process, learning this area of the fretboard, first in terms of a pentatonic scale, and then we'll add the other two notes to get to the major scale. So let's first map out what the colors mean here. We've got our fretboard, this representing the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling, and we have all of the green notes. What are the green notes? Well, they do not represent all of the notes in the C major scale, but rather only the notes in the pentatonic scale, which is a quite common scale and one that's gonna be possibly safer when you're kind of, uh, when you're improvising around 
So that's it's quite common to use the pentatonic scale, and then we'll see how the pentatonic scale fits in, of course, to the major scale, adding the two extra notes, which are not in the pentatonic uh, scale. Note that the pentatonic scale basically is related to the key of C major and the relative minor, meaning all of the notes kind of fit beautifully in the C major and the related minor. Be because of these missing notes that we used to construct the other chords, it might not be a perfect fit when we look at, say, other modes, for example. Uh, but oftentimes, some people like to learn the system by learning the pentatonic scale and then seeing how they can adjust the pentatonic scale to accommodate uh, things uh, like playing in a different mode or something like that. So that's one way that you might uh, structure things in your mind because the pentatonic scale really has kind of the most important notes oftentimes. And then you can learn what you want to build off of that pentatonic scale. Other people like to have the whole major scale and then see how the pentatonic scale kind of fits into the major scale, just kind of how your mind works or how you want to be looking at, at a particular problem. But the pentatonic scale uh, primarily relates beautifully to the C major scale and uh, the A minor scale. And of course, it's easier to learn because it has two less notes in it and it has some other rules that we can kind of follow when we're trying to just map it out on uh, the fretboard. So that's what the green notes are. Now then, these boxes are representing the shapes, the chunks of the fretboard that we're cutting the fretboard into. So the first shape, which I would call the, uh, the one, shape number one, but you can also call it a G shape. The reason you call it a G shape is because we're looking at the major scale, the key of C. We can also think of different modes, but if you think about the C as the related major scale, if I was to construct a C shape, you can see it, it uh, uh, a C chord. You can see it takes the form of a C shape that we would expect to see in open position. So you could use that to define that whole shape. Noting that when you're looking at the pentatonic, you would have to add the other notes because there's three notes in a chord and there's going to be five notes in the pentatonic scale to get the pentatonic scale. But you can still name that entire shape like a C major uh, G-shaped pentatonic shape. That becomes a little bit more messy to name it that when you add the other notes, the other two notes in the major scale because then this same G shape will fit in multiple different shapes. So you got to make sure you're trying to orientate your mind on how you're visualizing the fretboard and how you're going to name the fretboard, which is important so that you can kind of focus on what you want to be focusing in on. So here's the G, the G shape here. And you can see if I move that up here, that was to mute these notes. You kind of have that same shape up top. Then this one represents the uh, what I would call position number two on the fretboard. You can also call it an E shape. And the reason that's an E shape is because if you see this C right here and I was to build like an E bar chord shape, it's an E shape because if it was in open position, it would look like that. And then if you did that, it would look like that. And then if you move that up to a C, it would look like that. So you could name it like an E shape uh, position and then add the pentatonic, calling, calling it a C major, you know, E shaped uh, pentatonic position. And so you can see there's overlap between these shapes. So this shape, there's the top three. And then when you move up to this next chunk, you're going to be moving up here. So there's some overlap. This represents the overlap. That's what this bottom bit is. These are trying to show the overlap between the shapes. And that's kind of your pivot position so that you want to be thinking when you're looking at these shapes, it's often useful to be thinking, am I leaning back into this shape or am I leaning forward into into this shape? You can move in between them uh, as well. But when you want to think about where's your finger in position going to be? Am I which shape am I leaning into? And then we're going to do the same thing from the yellow uh, position two to position three. So this green box represents position number three, which you could call a, a D-shaped position because once again, if I took that C right there and you lean it forward, 
you get that little D shape that people are probably used to seeing, which people are used to seeing back here. But if I move it all the way up to here, past fret 12, where it basically starts to repeat, you can see we're pointing to that C now. Now to really get the bar shape, you could just play these three notes, but if I wanted to get the bar shape, I would have to reach back to this one, which means it's very difficult to finger. Some people can finger that well, I can't. So I just kind of cheat it when I, when I play the bar, which is gonna be this C, this G, and that E, and then I don't need the other C right there. I can switch from this position basically to that position if I so choose. But being able to see that shape is useful because some people will name this whole pentatonic shape and possibly even the major shape as basically a, you know, a D-shaped C uh, major uh, position. And, right, or I just would call it position number three. But it's useful to be able to link that uh, to that shape as an as a anchoring position. All right, so then we just want the general rules uh, with our shape. Uh, so I'm going to actually move this yellow shape in a bit so we can kind of look just at this shape so we don't see the overlap as much. So there we have it. Now the general rules uh, with these pentatonic shapes is that everything within the shape is going to be, there's got, not going to be any half steps. In other words, there are not going to be any notes right next to each other. That's basically what the pentatonic shape is removing. In other words, if I go down to the major shape, you can see that you have these positions where there's these half steps. And the half steps are kind of the fun things sometimes because those are the things that will give you that resolution, the tension and the resolution. However, there are also things that can make things sound, uh, make the music, the progressions sound odd or where problems can come up. So by removing basically all of these half steps, then you're more likely not to hit something that doesn't sound nice. And then you can decide when you want to be pulling in a half step or something like that is one way you can kind of look at it. But the pentatonic won't have any of those, so you're going to have either a space uh, between them like that, or you can have two notes in between them like that. You're never going to have a fingering position that's going to be longer than that uh, pointer to pinky, the perfect four fret apart pointer to pinky, which is great because that's perfectly comfortable for our our hand. So it fits the hand just perfect. And that's kind of like the idea of the shape. So also just realize that we are moving up over the top of this fret number 12. That's where the guitar starts to repeat again. We want to remember that these, in theory, these shapes would go on forever. If I go to this uh, this OG tab, actually I'll go to this tab, the scale overview tab. Notice that these shapes go on for forever, right? So I'm, I'm going from four to five to one, the two, the three, the four, the five, and then it would just keep going if you imagined the fretboard being infinitely long, or you can imagine it in a circular kind of uh, concept, which is useful when you don't have an infinitely long guitar, because I can't go much past after fret 12. We could if we had if we had electric guitar, but still, you're going to hit a cap up here, and then you've got to see where it loops back around. And you can imagine like in a circle format, and that's when we hit this basically this fret 12, which is the nut, all of the basically shapes are the same going from here back to here, except that, of course, you have to bar them off once you go past uh, this shape. That's going to be uh, the general rule. So, and so this one kind of skirts over it just a bit right there with that C. So we're going beyond it, but we're already back to this nut. The whole bar here is equivalent to the, these notes over here are the same as these notes over here. So we are starting to repeat there. So that's the general idea. Now when we practice fingering it, most people will practice fingering this by just starting here. And that's not exactly what you want to do most likely because if you just keep on starting at this shape and practicing it as a D, it's going to sound like you're trying to play it with the D as the tonic. And that would be like a D Dorian, which would be fine. However, even that is difficult to do because, you, because we don't have all the notes in the Dorian because we're using a pentatonic. So, so meaning that means that 
you know, the pentatonic fits beautifully with the C and the A. All the notes of the C and the A fit in it, or the one and the six, the Ionian and the Aeolian modes, if you want to see it that way. And if you try to make the D the center as you're playing a pentatonic, it's not going to work exactly well because the because the pentatonic isn't designed around the D. You're going to have some notes in the 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 D con, in the D construction that are the are the notes that have been removed. Like this F right there becomes important. So if you wanted to do it that way, if you want to practice playing a pen, like the pentatonic around the D, then you want to look at the important notes that have been missed and possibly add them, right? So then I can play the pentatonic and then add the F. That's how you might start altering your mind that way. But when you're just learning the shape at first, you want to be in C or A minor, or the major or the related minor, you would think, how could you do that? Well, I could start where the shape starts with a C, and that's usually the shape that we name it right here. So it's way down here in the middle, which kind of feels uncomfortable, but we can. that's one way we can do it. You can also say, okay, well, if I'm on the D here, if I go back one to the prior shape, there's my, there's my C. So that's often useful as well. So you might start it here, prior shape, keep in your mind that's the prior shape, moving up, and then we go from here to here. So then let's just follow this out. We go, boom, I'm gonna start here to get that in my mind, and then go, go boom, boom, and then we're going from our uh, ring and also realize that you could play this a couple different ways because when we move down to to adding the other two notes you'll see that my four finger position is actually like this from uh, frets number nine so you would think well I should play this with my ring finger so that I, my ring finger is ready to then uh, my pointer finger is ready to pick these up but I think most people, including myself, like to play it this way with my pointer finger, uh, even though that might not be technically the best optimal sh fingering to play all notes because you have a lot more ability to bend and do stuff with it than you do with your pinky. It's hard to bend and stuff with your pinky. So if you're playing fast then and you want to run through it, you might be good with your pinky. But if you want to bend and stuff, then you're probably going to want to be switching to your pointer. So that's why I would I would start here. I'm going to say I'm, here I am in the last position and slide that up to here. And then I'm going from pointer to ring and then back down here, pointer to ring, pointer to ring. And then I've got to reach all the way back that's where our fingering gets a little bit messed up this way because now I have to reach back uh, with my pointer one back and then it reach this one up with my pinky and then back and then reach up with my pinky and then pointer pinky. So we can go, okay, let's start with this C. Also note to emphasize the fact that we're in the key of C in our mind, we might want to be starting and stopping or emphasizing every time we hit the C as we finger through our scale and possibly even create a chord construction as we hit those C notes. So for example, if you look at this C and we were to construct a chord from it, most common chord would be looking going forward like this, which would be that E-shaped C major bar chord. So you can play that bar chord to start, or if you don't want to play the whole bar chord, you can do the power chord, which always looks like this, this note and this note, this shape. And that works all the time, except when you're in between these two strings because of the kink in the tuning. So we could start on that C here, which is behind the shape. That's gonna be the one. I'm just gonna count up five notes because there's five notes on the pentatonic. One, and then I'll slide this up to the D. Uh, two, three, four, five, and then back to one. So that brings me back to the one right here. And then if I build my chord based on that, there's my five. So there's basically my power chord. And then the third is back down here. So if I put my pinky down there, that would be the chord construction I can build when I get to there. So then I'm gonna move from here 
and stop at this C. So I'm back at, you might want to count out just five notes. So I'm back at one here, one, uh, two, three, four, five, and then back to one. And then once I'm there, I might play it this way. So there's my D shape, C, here, here, these two notes. And then, and note when I'm counting five notes, that I'm not really in sync with the seven note here because there's a five note scale. So this would be, I'm counting one, two, three, four, five, right? Because this is the seven note scale, this numbering system. So you could in your mind instead say, I'm going one, two, three, five, six. If you're thinking about the pentatonic scale as it fits into the seven note uh, major scale. But in any case, we're gonna say here's Here's where we end it off. So that's going to be uh, one, two, three. And so now I'm up here, back, two, one. And now I'm going backwards. So as I go back, I'll do the same thing. I'm going to play that little shape. And then I'm going to go back to this one. So now I'm in, you can call this then the uh, six if you want to, right? Six. Five, four, three, two, one, and now I'm back to this C, which I would play this shape with. So that's going to be this C, this G, and this E. And then I'm trying to mute this string, which I wasn't effective of right there. And then I'm going back from this C back to then that C. So now I'm going from uh, six, you can say. Six, five, four, three, two. And then I'm, instead of going back up, I'm gonna go back to my prior shape because I have it right there. Build my bar chord. There's my one or just the power chord. So that's how I would basically practice and getting fast at that. So you can just count the five notes, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Four, five, six. One, two, three, two, one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And so, count. It might be a little bit difficult to actually count through it, but I think that's useful in your mind. And again, if you want to think of it in terms of relations to the major. You might count it out this this way, one, two, three, five, six, and then back to the one or the eight, you could think of it, right? So we can think of it if we walk through it, one, two, three, and then this is the five, skipping the four to five, and then six, and that's where it ends because there's no seven, and then go to eight here. And most people, again, they don't do this in their mind. Oftentimes, I don't do it in, in my mind. It's useful to do this in the morning so you can kind of basically count these things out because if you actually do that, it's going to be a lot easier to orientate yourself and then tie it into what you want to do, the scale that you're working in. How does the pentatonic fit into the major scale? How can I alter it to then do what we want to do? So let's try just counting it out that way. So I'm going to start here. We're behind the shape. We might play a full chord. And then I'm going to go one, sliding up here, two, three, and then five, six, and that's where it ends, and then eight or one. So I'm going to eight or one, which is back to this C here. And then from there, we can play our shape like this, possibly. And then I'm going to go from here and do the same thing down to here, going from then one, two, three, five, six, eight, right? And then play my little D up top. And then we can go back. And so now we're on one, two, three, two, one. Dun. And then if we go backwards, it's gonna be even more difficult. So I'm gonna start on eight and then back to six, five, three. So eight, six, five, three, two, one, and then there's our little D shape. So now I went back from here, counting back to there, and then we can go from here 
back to here. Once again, I'm going from eight, uh, eight, not seven, but six, five, three, two, one, outside of our shape back to here, like that, or bar chord. So then the other way you can think of this is in the key of A, because this fits beautifully for the key of A minor, meaning the, the relative minor. So where is the, the relative minor? It's gonna start out right here. You can think of that shape. The minor shape would be here to here. So this would be, if I was to build a minor shape, I'd go, this is the one, three, five. And I can also build one down here, which is gonna look like this. So we'll get into the cage system later. The minors are often harder to see but this is basically a C-shaped A uh, minor, because if you took this C-shape and you moved it up to here, now you're reaching that A right there, but there's the third, which is a major third. If I move that back to where our position is, a minor third, you end up with this shape, which it looks like a, C sh like a minor C-shape, right? And then this bit down here is part of that shape that we can't really finger, uh, when you're doing it as a bar chord, so you play them separately, usually. Right, so that's going to be the idea there. So we can do the same thing with the A. So now I'm just going to play the same pentatonic, but I'm thinking about the related uh, minor as now its central point, and then I can count through in the same way. I can count from here uh, to here, making it sound like a minor. So I'm, just, and so I'm learning the same shape, but I'm just seeing as I'm learning it, where can I apply this? So I'm gonna say, starting out just five notes. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, back to the one. So now we're on this one. I might make a shape from it right there. And then one, two, three, four. So now I'm, I'm back to here, four, and then three, two, one, so now I'm back to home where I can make this shape from. So I'm holding, uh, I'm holding down boom, 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 making that shape, and then I can bring it back. So I'm gonna call this, you might call it six if you're thinking about it as five notes. So this is the one uh, or six that we're on. So I'd say, okay, we're on six, five, four, Three, two, one, and then here's my minor chord construction, which I can go. Da, da, da. Oops, sorry, that's a major. Da, da, da. So that's going to be this, this, and this. You can also build this construction. There's the fifth above it and the third, so it might be more comfortable for people to use it this way. That's another way that you can build that. We'll see that more when we start doing like our modes and stuff. And then we could go back down. I'm just gonna go back down to here. There's no A above it. So I'm just gonna wrap it around. I'm gonna go, this is gonna be, all right. Six, uh, five, four, three, and then back up. Four, five, six. And then again, I might do it this way and play that that way. Now you also might say, you might do the same thing and say, well, how can I fit these notes into the overarching major scale? It's relative major. Or if we were to think about it as the minor mode, converting that to the one, we can count through it from basically the, the minor mode. So I won't do it this time because it's probably more likely that you're not gonna be thinking of it as, you, if you wanted to count it through, you would count it through as the one, uh, similar to the minor mode. So I won't do that right now related to the major mode. We'll talk about the modes or playing around these chords basically later. But for right now, we want to get the idea of just fingering this shape, being able to finger through the shape, and again, f initially practicing doing that by focusing in on the C notes to make it sound like a C in your mind, and then the A notes to make it sound like an A minor, or like you're playing around the sixth, because those are the most common uses. And then from there, think about how you can play that same scale to add like a Dorian feel playing around the two, in which case you're gonna have to add like the F, for example, 
because that's the missing note that we use to construct a Dorian, which is important because it's the three note, but it's not here. So then you can think about how can I basically add the note that gives me the flavor that I want from the pentatonic that is for the related major scale. That's one way that a lot of people seem to think because they because I think a lot of people like just the the simplicity of the pentatonic and then and then just adding what you want from that. Personally, I tend to think about it the other way. I add the other notes in my mind for the seven notes and then I try to see how the pentatonic kind of fits inside the seven note uh, major scale. But either way seems to work quite well depending on how you're thinking about things. Then after this, what we will do, of course, is uh, think about the, the intervals. We'll talk about the intervals a bit more. And then we will also add the, the major notes, the added two notes to make the major scale. And then we'll think about basically uh, each of these, focusing on each of these notes, which means we're basically kind of playing in different modes, but we'll talk about modes later. Right now, we'll just kind of say we're centralizing around these notes so I can learn all of the chords that fit into this C major shape and the related mode shapes, which give you a whole lot of uh, flexibility to play different things, even though you're basically playing notes that all fit within uh, a C major scale. We'll talk about how we can blend what we've looked at in open position, which of course we learned more from a chord construction. We spent a lot of time on chords here. If you, if you know your open chords, then of course you can kind of jump in and do more of your, your freestyle stuff, I guess, uh, your soloing or kind of, of, uh, of tinkering around in between chords and whatnot up here, which we learned in more of a scale format. And then we've also learned a little bit of the, of the chords as we've done that as well. And then we'll get to the caged system where we'll more formally learn all of the shapes in each position, remembering that the idea is that you can play everything in, in, in a four to five uh, fret space. That's the beauty of the guitar. But you can also move and play basically everything in every other position, meaning you have the option of having different, different voicings of the same chords by moving up and down the register on the guitar. So that's what we'll get a feel for in future presentations.